trigonometry. In grade 10, we were first introduced to this and we were told that it was all founded on the measurement, metry, of triangles. And so what happened was they found certain ratios to be true in all triangles and they began to adapt that and they saw oh, we can put this on the Cartesian plane, we can use this to solve real life problems, we can find ratios that are true in a graphical sense. And so trigonometry is really quite a broad field, but it all starts here with the measurement of triangles. And we want to build on a good foundation. And so let's just take a look and see what we remember about trigonometry. What are some of the foundations that should be in place so that we can tackle our grade 11 work with confidence? Okay, first things first, these were nice and straightforward. One of the sections of our grade 10 syllabus was just understanding how to use our calculator. So the first thing you need to check when you are working with trigonometry on your calculator is that your calculator is in degree mode. So you want to look for that little uh, letter over there. And if it's not, you can change the mode by selecting there the mode option. Okay, and then it's very straightforward. As long as that's all in place, your calculator should be able to handle these calculations. Okay, first one is very straightforward to two decimal places. So we're literally going to type this in and come to an answer. Test it out and see if you get the same answer as I do. So cos 42,8 plus sine 11,32 minus tan 3,05 uh, punched into my calculator gives me an answer of 0, 0,88. Two decimal places there. Okay, sine squared of 99 degrees, that one we're going to need to put into our calculator. The calculator automatically opens brackets. Okay, but we want that whole thing to be squared. Now, a lot of these modern calculators can do it if you type the squared in exactly where it is. But if you're not getting the right answer, then this is worth understanding. And in some of your later work, it's actually helpful just to know that the squared applies to everything. And so it gets it's a good habit to write it there outside. So on the calculator then, sine of 99 squared is going to give us 0, comma. 9, 8 as an answer to two decimal places. So here are some true trig equations. So we've got an unknown and we've got it equal to something and we need to solve. Okay, they've told us here that the angle is somewhere in the first quadrant. So it's an acute angle um, that can fit inside of a triangle. And we need to solve for the following. So if ever the angle is unknown, like in this case, then we need to use the arc sine function on our calculator. So when we type that in, we're going to say, well, theta is equal to, and then shift sine will give us that, which will then help us to be able to solve this. So 4, 3, 2, 1. I am going to punch that in on the calculator. So shift sine, and then 0, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we get an answer there, and they want, oh, we're going to just keep going with two decimal places where we can. Okay, so 25, in this case, it's comma 6, 0. So um, in a math sense, we'd actually just be happy with comma 6. But there you have it. And the answer, when we put units down, is going to be in degrees. Okay, because our calculator is in degree mode, that's what that means. Okay, so in the previous examples, we were given an angle and then we calculated. We didn't have to use the shift button. But in these examples, the angle is unknown, and so we have to use the shift, and we then need to calculate, okay, the, the angle that is missing in degree, uh, in the unit of degrees. Okay, so let's do the second one. Three theta minus 10, this is the whole unknown angle, okay. So be careful, we can't minus or take the 10 over yet and, and make it a plus 10, it's too soon for that. What we need to do in this next step is just say 3 theta minus 10 is equal to, and then we're going to do the arc cos function over here, 0, 7, 8, 9. So 3 theta minus 10, on the calculator we're going to go shift cos, 0, 7, 8, 9, and we end up there with, 37 comma 9078 dot dot dot. Okay, in this one over here, I round it off. Okay, because it was the final answer. But here in math, we never round off until the final answer. So let's keep that answer on our calculator and sort out this um, left hand side now. We've got some options that we can do. First things first, we can move this minus 10 over and it's going to become plus 10. 
So on the calculator, plus 10 is going to take us up to 47, comma 9, 0, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so 3 theta is equal to 47, comma 9, 0, 7, 8, dot, dot, dot. And then divide by 3, what I do to the one side, I do to the other side. So theta is now equal to 15, and now I'm allowed to round off. So 15, comma 9, 7 degrees. There we have it. Okay, so when solving tr um, equations, be careful. Have a look. Am I given an angle? Then I just type it straight into my calculator. Or is the angle missing? Then I'm going to have to use the shift button. Okay, and we are going to build quite a lot on our knowledge of trig equations this year. So make sure these foundations are firmly in place. The next thing that we need to remember from grade 10 trigonometry is how to solve for unknowns in right-angled triangles. So in this instance, we've got two right angles here, and we want to solve these. So there's some important stuff. Oh, look at this. There are two unknowns here in this triangle. Uh, we want to solve these triangles, um, but we need to remember some of the foundations of trigonometry in order to do that. So back in grade 10, we were introduced to the right angle triangle, and we were told that we are given an angle, and within that triangle, we've got a hypotenuse that sits across from the 90 degree, we've got a side that sits across from the angle that we're given, that's the opposite side, and then a side that is next to it, which is the adjacent side. And then there are a couple of different ways to remember the trig ratios, but some of the ways, or one of the ways that works for me, is this one, so ka Okay, and so that was sine, cos, and tan. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. And if we've got this knowledge, then we can actually solve these triangles. We just need to remember one little principle, and that is that you take the unknown side over the known side. Okay, that's your best um, trick when it comes to solving these triangles. Okay, so if we have a look at this triangle here, the first one, let's quickly be given a 30 degree angle. The first thing I like to do is fill in the hypotenuse, that's the easiest one to spot. Then there's an angle adjacent to, so the other one that's touching the, the 30 degree angle, and then there's an opposite angle. Okay, so the side I want is x over the side I've been given is 16. And if I look at that, it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. Now, hypotenuse over opposite is similar to sine, but it isn't sine, it's upside down. So then, what we used to do, hopefully this is all coming back to you, we used to use the reciprocals. Okay, so sine worked with cosec, but there's no cosec button on our calculator. And at grade 11 level, we're not even expected to worry about that. So the easiest way to do this is just to say, well, this is an upside down sign. So I'm going to write it then as one over sign of that angle that I've been given. Okay, so that's definitely the most straightforward way of doing it. And then we can multiply both sides by 16. Um, and so we end up with 16 over sine 30. X is equal to 16 over sine 30. Okay, so I'm given the angle. I can just type that in, 16 over sine 30, and I end up there with an answer of 32, and that triangle was in millimeters, so I'm going to give my answer as a millimeter answer. Okay, if we look at the next one there, um, you start again with your unknowns. It's always helpful to work in alphabetical order, so we can work out x first, um, and we can definitely use trigonometry for that, but... When I look at this triangle here, I notice that I actually don't have an angle to work with. Okay, 90 degrees isn't going to help us in solving this unknown side. It needs to be one of these other two acute angles, and I don't know what Y is. So then I need to go back to my understanding of grade 7 and 8 maths, where they taught us about Pythagoras. And Pythagoras said that we can use the two short sides to work out the long side. His, his theory is the square of the two short sides um, is going to add up to the square on the long side. So let's do that then to work out x. So we're going to say, thanks to Pythagoras, that x squared plus 3 squared is equal to 5 squared. And then remember to give him some credit. So we always give a reason for that answer. 
So x squared plus 9 is equal to 25. We can take that 9 over. And so x is equal to plus or minus 4. Remember that whenever we put a root in, we do it with a plus or a minus. Okay, but in this case, it's a side length. So therefore, x is equal to 4, and this triangle is given in centimeters. Okay, so now we've got a 4 centimeter side there. Okay, and then we can work out y. Um, so let's, in relation to y, let's put down the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree. Opposite is this one across from the angle that we've just worked out. And adjacent is the one next to it. Okay, now um, we've got a whole bunch of options, but it's always better to go with the ones that they gave us, just in case we made a tiny calculation error here. Let's rather use adjacent and hypotenuse. And so if I look at this Sokotoa ratio option here, that's going to be cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what I can say now is that cos of this unknown angle, okay, it's called y, is equal to adjacent, that's 3, over hypotenuse, 5. And now have a look, the angle is missing. Be careful. That means we need to use the arc cos. So y is equal to shift cos of 3 over 5. And let's do that. Shift cos of 3 over 5, which is equal to 53,13 degrees. So there we have it, solving right angle triangles. So important to remember these ratios. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse. Cos, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan, opposite over adjacent. The other section that we need to remember from grade 10 is this section on special angles. Okay, so there are two ways we can remember the special angles. We can either use the special angle triangles or we can use a method which I quite like, which is called the fan method. Okay, special angles are not given to us. We need to know them. And we also need to know that if we think about Sokotoa, so Sokotoa, okay, that this can be applied onto the Cartesian plane. So Y works with opposites, R works with hypotenuse, and X works with adjacent. Okay, so now what we've got is tan of 45 degrees. We need to, with this in our memory, we need to go and say, on the 45 degree line, tan is y over x. And so we take these, these work as coordinates, y over x, root 2 over root of 2. Okay, if you've forgotten these special angles, please go and watch the grade 10 video because these are going to be asked all the way through till the end of the trick. Okay, so tan of 45 then can be written as the root of 2 over the root of 2. And what do we know? When the numerator and denominator are identical, then this just equals to 1. Again, then sine of 30 plus cos of 60. So on the 30 degree line, we want sine, which is y over r. So 30 degrees, 1 over 2. All of these have an r value of 2. So that's going to be 1 over 2 plus cos of 60 degrees. On the 60 degree line, cos is x over r. So 1 over 2. Oh, so that ends up being a half plus a half, which then gives us a nice answer there of one. Okay, so thanks to our special angles and our understanding of the fact that we can adapt these triangles to triangles on the Cartesian plane. Remember that these, if you were to drop a perpendicular, would form different triangles. That's why we're allowed to do these special angles on the Cartesian plane. That's where it comes from. Okay, so there we have it. Sine, cos, and tan on the Cartesian plane, but still working in special triangles and then we can solve for those special angles so make sure that this is in your memory